It was called The Grindhouse. Theaters that played back-to-back -back movies featuring uncensored sexuality and hardcore thrills. Now, Tarantino and Rodriguez are bringing The Grindhouse back with two explosive feature films. First, they're stealing biochemical weapons. When the laws of science are broken, the last hope for humanity rests in the hands of a few. Doc Block is prescription pain. We gotta lose the arm, Joe. What do you mean lose arm? My arm? Dakota, one hot mama who knows the score. If anyone comes to the door, I want you to run. What if it's dad? Hello, baby. Especially if it's your dad. El Rey, cross him and it's lights out. And Jerry Darling. I made you something. She tastes like trouble. With an attitude to boot. In Robert Rodriguez, Planet Terror. When I was growing up in Las Vegas, born and raised, we had the Skyway Drive-In Theater on, on Boulder Highway. Yeah. And one of my friends lived across the street in a neighborhood, and his older brother ran a line under the wash mm -hmm. into their tree house. Uh -huh. So we had... And the speaker! Up, yeah, the speaker. So uh -huh. if you were invited to spend the night at his house, you could go up to the tree house uh -huh. and watch the Skyway uh -huh. Theater and uh -huh. watch the drive-in. Uh -huh. And we used to go out of the time. I I've never heard that story is like that, cool? that before. Like, that yeah, is the that coolest story. story. <laughs> Isn't it? And uh, I saw Grizzly, Empire yeah. of the Ants, The Car, yeah. Squirm. Day of the Animals. Oh, yeah. Day of the Animals. <laughs> Food of the Gods. Yeah. All of those. So I'm a huge Zarkov fan. And when you did American International, a little play on that. Yeah. yeah. R.I.P. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, that's, that's awesome. And uh, this movie all started Grindhouse started because you both had the same poster yeah. in each other's homes? Yeah. And, and it was again, it was an American International one from the 50s. It was uh, Roger Corman's Rock All Night and Drag Strip Girl. And it was actually almost designed it exactly like, like that. that, like that Grindhouse poster there. And... Uh, and we've always had a connection over Rock All Night anyway. And so he was like just uh, st stepping over. Uh, my, my house is just filled with stacks of video cassettes and posters on the floor. So he was stepping over the poster and goes, you know, I have that exact same poster. And matter of fact, it's on my floor too. And you know, come to think of that, Quentin, you see that double feature poster there? I always had a, an, in mind an idea of doing a double feature movie. I was going to do, you know, two different stories. Wait a minute. Why don't you do one and I'll do the other one? And he goes, Oh, we gotta have fake trailers in it, we gotta call it Grindhouse, because they love double features. So that quickly, it all came together. And, and also, that quickly, it became evident that not only do we want to do these two cool movies, but it was about this, this, this night at the movies experience mm -hmm. that doesn't exist anymore, that we're gonna try to create. I broke my leg. Okay, I made you something. Stand. You have two roles in this movie. Did you get two paychecks? I did. Really? Uh, <laughs> neither of which were huge. <laughs> but if I took my small money to Vegas, maybe I gotta change my odds. Oh, put it down on red or black. It'll just double it quick. Red. <laughs> you want it on red? I'd go red. Uh, well, there's no gamble in taking this role. Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez, I mean, you couldn't get two more incredible filmmakers. Right, I mean, it's kind of every actress's dream, I suppose, so <laughs> that part was great. Getting the script, so we, what did you do when you first got it to, did they give it to you in pages or the whole thing, or? No, it wasn't really like that. I mean, Robert's script, I auditioned, you know, I met him in Cannes, and I was talking to him about, you know, basically why couldn't a girl play a guy role, essentially. <laughs> and so he got to thinking about that, and Cherry really sprang from that completely. And then, you know, got the script as it went along, and then obviously he called one day and he said, I have a great idea. She's gonna have a machine gun leg. I'm like, fantastic! And then Quentin's, I auditioned for it twice while I was filming Planet Terror. And so, no, that was already in place. Quentin had his, you know, thing all done. Exciting film, yes. but I, I remember these films when I was a kid, 
and I'm not that old, but, mm -hmm. but uh, me and you are probably yeah, the yeah. same age, I'm you know. Sure, not the, her, obviously. It's at the big 4-0, you know, <laughs> right. in September. Yes. And I remember your dad. Thanks for looking it up. <laughs> well, we're both, you know, because I, I, you know, going through movies through my, you know, I'm like, well, you know, we're the same age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I remember growing up that your dad had the car. Yeah. I, oh, I love that you brought that. I up. know, because I saw. And it's one of those movies. Exactly. It's definitely one of those movies. I haven't mentioned that yet. No, yeah. The car, and the car is very much like Death Proof. Exactly. You take Kurt Russell out, and it's that movie. I'm like 11 or 12. No, Quentin and I talked about yeah, that. Yeah, we were seeing yeah. it, and the kids flip off the car. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. The exactly. devil comes to earth in a car. I know it's one of those films. But, you know, the you watch it now, and it's you like just It's like Christine, go, which like she Christine. just mentioned. Yeah. yeah, it's like Christine. But it's one of those movies you watch now and going, well, geez, you had to be 11, you know, back right. then to enjoy it. And you it. had that, that, that 70s mustache, which exactly. was great, which the old man And your dad, had. was your dad the baddie? No, he was the goodie. No, he was the... He was the goodie. He was trying I only to defend the baddie. My dad only played the goodies. I was going to say, like, father, like, son. He's trying to defend the world against the devil in his car. Yeah, it was pretty cool, though. But it was exactly like that. It was, it was. So it's pretty cool. No, Quentin and I talked about that, and it was, it was, I know, somewhat of an inspiration writing Death Proof. I, I, it just, it's one of those things, you know. Yeah. I, I grew up watching these, and mm -hmm. I'm just thrilled that they did things like this. Talk about Marley. I am. Uh, <laughs> how do you I work with my dad? He's, he's, he's micromanaging your interview. That's fine. That, I'm Dr. honored. Dr. Block, on. see why, see why it wasn't on. working out in our marriage? Let's go. Oh. <laughs> I know. Control. It's you guys control. are married in the movie, though, aren't you? What? You're married in the movie. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you're cheating on him. And what a great way to cheat, you know, yeah, if I may say so. You're gonna if cheat. you're going to do it, you got to so do it with Fergie. Fergie. Another hot chick. Not, not, only, not only a woman, but the Fergie. How do you work without your hands in the movie? I mean, how many... <laughs> you're trying to open a car door. You're trying to start a car. Yes. How did you not laugh trying to... Being so ridiculous in that? I, it really was physical comedy. I'm glad you said that. But... Uh, you know, you just commit to the circumstances, and obviously she's she's on the run, and um, she's got to go get her son before zombies eat him too. So mm. there's a lot. The stakes were pretty high. I want you to open that for mommy. Can you? Take the gun. Careful. And if anyone comes to the door, it isn't me. I want you to shoot them, okay? I'm not kidding, Tony. You shoot them in the head. What if it's dad? Especially if it's your dad. I saw some scenes where you were running from the zombies and everyone's running for the trucks and trying to get away, and you were wearing heels. And you, I saw you slip and slide a couple times. I'm so glad you said that. I think I still contend that I deserve stunt hazard pay for them for those That's nights. True. I mean, literally running in those heels like night after night after night. It was it was a bit treacherous for sure. The scene where you're squeezing a tongue. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, nice, isn't that right? horrific? That is one of the most gross, disgusting, and that's Nicky Katz's really, that's his real tongue. Is it really? Yeah, it wasn't a prosthetic or anything. That's what his tongue really looks like. Yeah. Ah. Oh, breathe it. Nice. Black abscess tongue. All abscesses should be drained, period. Wait, hi. Shut up, Joe. And uh, so you guys play two very different characters in Planet Terror. I mean, you're <laughs> the scientist that's trying to control this virus or something that's turning people into zombies. It's right? all my fault. Yes, <laughs> and you're the only one person that can save us. But it's really weird because your character is, it goes back and forth. I mean, you're a scientist, but then also you're this brutal collector. Yes, um, <laughs> uh, but a collector of very precious objects. Yes, which, which family are, jewels, if which, we can which say. Which are dear to my <laughs> heart and probably to, to you too. And your character is somewhat of an enigma, a mystery. Yeah, well, that's what's interesting about the character, you know, is that is that he's a mystery in the beginning, and then as as the film unfolds, layers are peeled away, and then you get to see all these different skills. You know, you get to see him handle knives and handle guns, and and just uh, you know, just kick some butt. You know, I, I you know, and it took me months to learn that 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 stuff. I've never done that before. No, don't touch him. Why not? He's infected. What? Everything. Right? Where do you think you're going? I'm gonna go get Cherry. Fine, but well, we're taking my car. I'm riding it with you. And I, I can't imagine a more quintessential role than the sheriff in a movie like this with zombies and. I mean, I, <laughs> that's yeah. got to be like the character to play in this movie. Well, uh, it was. Uh, 
the thing that I liked about this character, yes, he's the sheriff, yes, he's fighting the zombies, but I have, I think, because I haven't seen the movie yet, but you should get a sense that I've had a past relationship with Ray, and that there's, yeah. a, con there's a conflict. Well, there. there's a missing reel, and I, I don't yeah. know if you know the joke. Yeah. <laughs> we, we don't know, the, you know him for some reason, but right. then yeah. there's a missing reel, right. and then you guys have this But bond. also with Jeff's character, I have a character, I have, a, I have kind of a conflict with him. So within this movie about zombies, I've got relationships with people that I have to work out. And right. so that's what I really liked about the character was it was it was more than just, you know, fighting off zombies. It was this relationship stuff with these two characters at the same time. And finally, I had to ask you, because your character yes, runs a barbecue restaurant, was there really a secret barbecue recipe? Because you start to mention a recipe at the end there. There still is. There still is. We'll never know. I love good barbecue, but you're not going to tell me, are you? Uh, you'll see it in the uh, sequel. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Buckle up, because a new kind of terror is coming at 200 miles per hour. Ladies, we're gonna have some fun. There are a few things as fetching as a bruised ego on a beautiful angel. Is that cowboy wisdom? Yeah, I'm not a cowboy, Pam. I'm a stuntman. Quentin Tarantino's Death Proof. This car is 100% death proof. Only to get the benefit of it, honey, you really need to be sitting in my seat. For Grindhouse, uh, you know, you've been around the block and you've read a lot of scripts. So I I'm dying to know what you thought of Tarantino's script when you had it in your well, hands. Well, when I heard that he wanted me to do the movie, I thought, oh man, I really hope <clears throat> that this is the kind of movie and the kind of character that I would want to do in a Tarantino movie. And I, as soon as I got the guy's name, I thought, well, oh, this, this could be really right. And for me, it just went from there to better and better and better and better. It was exactly what, what I wanted to do. Play this character in this movie, on this, in this conceptual night, which is literally like stepping back to 1970 and seeing how, what it was like to go to the movie theater then. But with modern day movies, with movies right. that are made now but made him made like the grindhouse days. Do I frighten you? Is it my scar? It's your car. Ah, yeah, I know. Sorry. Have you been following us? <laughs> no, but that's what I love about Austin. It's just so damn small. You've seen us go before? I saw him outside of Guero's. And I saw you outside Guero's too. You saw my car, I saw your legs. Now look, I ain't stalking y'all, but I didn't say it wasn't a wolf. So you really weren't following us? I'm not following you, Butterfly. I just got lucky. And the sexual tension between you and Kurt Russell, that scene, <laughs> I mean, it just, did you know it was gonna play off like that, you know? Or is it because it was just, uh... Well, you always hope that yeah. it will play like that, but he's so great and we got along so well that it, it just was natural, you know? And when you look at this, you think, you know, it looks simplistic in its, because of the story and the nature, but, you know, it's very complicated. No, 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 no. And especially, you know, we went over, we sh were shooting all this extra stuff. It took, we did six weeks of just the stunt driving. And P Quentin was so determined, like, nothing that we would, that would end up in the movie would be something that he cheated to get. There was no CGI, there were going to be no special effects. If we could not do those stunts ourselves, then we weren't, they weren't going to be in the movie. And so it's really incredible. It's very rigorous. It demands a lot of everybody, you know, because insurance and, like, every, I mean, it's pretty scary. When you have your lead actor hooked to the stra strapped to the hood of the car, you're like, <laughs> Th things can be really scary, but it was it was pretty phenomenal. Like just that dedication making this movie was but pretty great. Oh my god! opinion, one of the greatest movie stunts of all time is Ernie Orsatti from Poseidon Adventure when he falls off and goes through the skylight, if you mm -hmm. know that film. That, uh -huh. People ask me what's the greatest stunt in the world, but after watching you, that has got to be one of those, I've never seen anything like that in my life. Yeah, as a stunt I mean, was, woman, they took every precaution, you took everything, you know, you were okay, safe, you were safe. Yeah, yeah we but were, sure we were safe. 
No, and that's the idea, and that's one of the beauties of, of having the actress and the stunt person be the same person, is that you can shoot it in all the different ways that you normally couldn't for one reason or the other, you know? And, uh, I mean, at the end, on the last, our last day, Quentin said whatever, and then he was like, and Zoe's not dead! And the whole crew was like, Whoa! I was like, oh, wow, are well, people really scared about that? But are you getting ready to be called Stuntman Mike now for the rest of your... Well, I said, you know, yeah, every, every, seems like every, you know, eight, ten years, you, or at least it's been in my case, I do a character where people then, they, re, they refer to me as that for a while. I, I, I'm ready for... I, I can see why Stuntman Mike would be that. I mean, he's, he's going to Stuntman Mike. He's, 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 he's this guy who uses a car instead of a gun. Well, I mean, you're, you're you turning know. into your roots, you know. That yeah, and I haven't done it for a while. Yeah, I mean, the last time I got to play uh, this a kind of a character uh, was Dark Blue, but Dark Blue is a, is a real person. It's not a cult Stuntman, character. Yeah, yeah. Stuntman, and Stuntman Mike is a cult character. Exactly. He's like, just kick, he's like a snake buskin, or he's like Rudy Russo, or he's like Jack Burton, or... You know, those guys in those movies that... Characters we haven't seen in a long time. Yeah, and then, you know. <laughs> you do a great John Wayne impression in this movie. Well, it was weird. We were just doing this scene, and uh, we were just doing different stuff. This is the, you know, it was fun about working with Quentin. It was just, I just started doing a little something, and he, and he said, and he just stopped, and he said, do, go ahead, do it. Go do, do, do John Wayne. And I, I was trying to think of the lines, and I was just having fun <laughs> with myself and playing with this guy. It was completely off the chart weird at the time. And we were just... And it, but it would fit this guy. He, you don't. What's he do? Where's Where's his brain right now? And it, you could tell that he. What it was was it referred to something that was cut out of the movie, but it didn't ever matter. He'd done a John Wayne movie, but you sort of you, the minute he starts talking like that, you sort of say, did he work with him or double <laughs> him or did he? And we don't even see your face at the beginning. You're eating all these nachos. You're out of focus and just being this disgust. You don't even know what's going on. You had to eat a ton of nachos during that shoot. Three days worth. Oh, Lord. That was a little rough. <laughs> Good nachos, though. <laughs> One ticket to ride. In two and a half hours of pure dynamite. Planet terror and death proof. Only at the Grindhouse. Okay, Grindhouse is in theaters now. Yes, it's three hours and ten minutes, but you know what? It's the best three hours and ten minutes you'll spend in the movie theater. It is awesome. The intermissions, the fake trailers. Grindhouse is an instant classic. I couldn't... Uh, I had a blast. You want to go see it with me? Shoot me an email. We'll go out and see it again. I loved it.